that. Oh, sure. Hey, look, it's my move. All right, hello, good luck. Apparently, I get white this time. Um, that was kind of an unexpected bonus. So let me pick what I want to play here. Pick my poison. Um, I'm gonna learn the most playing it this way. So let's do that. Now, because it took me a minute to make my first move. Oh, okay. Got an instantaneous reply. All right. Here we go. I was going to say it might take him a minute to get to my game, because this is going to be one where he's got a time edge on the clock initially. Um, keep in mind he is playing a whole ton of people, so my game is going to be the last one to show up in the queue, because I started a minute late. Um, but it should be an interesting experiment. So everybody knows that I don't play the King's Gambit regularly. Um, I mean, I play it in Blitz sometimes. It's not my mainstay opening, but it's a fun thing to do for Simuls, for sure. And I'm curious what he's got prepped against it. So, I, ever the antagonist, um, I'm trying to just see like what I could possibly learn from this game. I know there are plenty of good openings. Uh, I know King's Gambit is... it's a good opening, but uh, there are other things that you're normally supposed to play in tournaments and stuff. Um, I'm not sure I really knew what I was going to play against C5, although I could have thought about, like, the Alapin and uh, other, like, the C3 Sicilian. Could have tried to zug it up with Knight C3 and F4. That could have been fun. But here we are, and um, my opponent's obviously thinking about other games that he's got in progress. But he should. I wonder, I forget, were there like 15 people or so in this simul? I know there were 10 at the time I joined it. Um, so it's possible that for that many players, 2010 might be a bit fast of a time control. Um, it's generally bad if your time control has more players just in terms of player count, than there are seconds in the increment. Um, because that means when you get low on time, you have uh, less than one second per move. And that's including the time it takes to render the last player's move. So, hypothetically, if we get out to move, I don't know what. Um, if we get out to move 40 or so, This is a fun thing. I actually have been on uh, the receiving end of this before as black. Although I kind of wimped out and played the bishop check and then eventually had to retreat the bishop. Um, but if, if our resident master here J. Postuma says that Queen H4 is good. It's got to be okay. Might not be the best thing, but it's definitely playable if a master is playing it. Either that or I've completely stumped him, which would be hilarious, and he's trying to stump me in return. Um, if it, that's the case... I'm sure it's not, but if it were the case, that would be hilarious. Um, so, I'm not entirely sure what to play here. And by that, I actually mean I just have no clue. Like, 
Knight c3 protects the pawn, but allows knight g4, threatening knight, takes pawn. Um, pretty sure I can't just let the queen sit there. Knight f3 looks very tempting. Then again, queen f3 also looks interesting. Um, with the intent of playing d4 and then taking on f4. And I wouldn't need necessarily to play knight f3. If knight f3, queen g4, and it's kind of tricky to retrieve the pawn. Also, if knight f3, I'm just dropping the e pawn. Um, after queen g4, this is still loose. Um, if I play queen f3, he might play g5. It couldn't be more evident that I have no idea what's going on. But, yeah, chess is fun. Wait, if knight f3, queen g4, I can take f7. Uh, that could be fun. Yeah, I'm gonna just develop the knight. If I take on f7, you could play like king d8 or king e7, I guess. Um, but you know, he's not going to play this sort of thing. He's a master, he'll see the kind of tactic. Um, I'm more playing this because I know that my knight's never going to end up on h3, and I don't want it on e2. Therefore, in practically every line, it's going to end up on f3 anyway, so let's just play it there. Uh, the only reason not to play it there is if I want to use this, this square or anything beyond it with my queen. But looking at queen f3, g5, I don't want my queen there at all. Um, queen f3, g5, queen b3, I guess in hindsight, might have been worth considering, but it's dangerous. Um, especially because he's got bishop c5 and knight e4 and other stuff, so my attacks on f7 are a bit slow there compared to what he's got. Also, I have to apologize for that motor running in the background. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, it's just scorching outside, and I have to keep cool if I'm going to be able to focus at all. He's probably still focusing on his other games. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what would be a good square for that queen. I'm assuming h6. Although, h6 does eventually expose the queen to uh, threats uh, from the c1 bishop. But I expect that after queen h6, you could play g5 and queen g6. So that's kind of my rationale there. I guess you could play queen h5. It would stop the immediate threats, but long term it doesn't 
unless you're planning to transfer it to like A5 or C5 or something, it doesn't look well placed on H5. Yeah, so H6 is expected. Um, and now I'm thinking, uh, where do I want my pieces? I could easily play knight e5 and then take f7. Uh, that would be the most aggressive possible thing I could do in this position. Uh, I could play d4, he probably plays d6, and my attack slows down a little bit. Like d4, d6, e5, pawn takes. Well, he's not going to take, but e5, he moves his knight somewhere. Or maybe d4, d5. And if I take. Um, I guess the center is opening up. It's not a bad thing for me, but uh, having the d5 square occupied uh, does slow my attack on f7. Yeah, I mean, what's up with this? Why shouldn't I just do that? The only retort to this is d5. I could just take d5, and we got an interesting position going on. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I understand it. Uh, I guess if I do this, he could counterattack. Um, like, he could do... Uh, how do I get the colored arrows? Like this? He could be threatening this sort of stuff. So... I'm not the only player attacking in that position. Um, still, I like my chances. Uh, so my knight on e5, I, I guess I have bishop takes f7. Um, huh. So here we are. Learning the King's Gambit. Um, yeah, if I do nothing, he just plays like knight c6 or d6, and my attack is really slowing down. Um, I don't like that once the knight moves, he's got queen b6 check ideas. I don't get it. Well, here I am solving opening theory. I'm currently down a pawn. If I play d4, um, I'm assuming knight c6, it all looks okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I can't move a piece twice in the opening. I need to develop. Um, it's tricky. try one other thing here. Just make sure I have um, my user style up to date. There we go. If I refresh this... Huh. I did make a change to my user style. I expected the numbers uh, to show up on the left side of the board. I'll have to look into that later. Oh, hang on. No, that's... 
That's actually a separate user style. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, there we go. Now if I refresh, do I get what I'm expecting? No. That'll be a fun little effect for us later, but that's still not exactly what I was looking for. Maybe that only applies on the analysis page. Yeah, I'll have to look, dig into that for next time. still not sure. There's tons of threats going on in this position. If he plays knight e4, I have queen e1, which I'm kind of counting on. Um, just pinning the knight, suspending it in action. Um, I also have queen e2, maybe. It's a little bit riskier on account of knight g3 being coming a much larger threat. Um, the queen e1 would allow my queen to mobilize to h4 if I needed to. Uh, completely breaking the pin on the h pawn. Not sure. Queen e2 would help defend my c4 bishop, but I don't see a need for it. We must have quite an interesting game going on elsewhere. We just maybe took on too many opponents at once. Um, either way, this is going to be quite a melee. Also, the fact that I'm taking a lot of time to think about my moves, and probably probably means I'm taking more time than the average opponent would take. And I suspect that his typical opponent is moving a lot faster means he's got to see those positions more frequently than he sees mine. So in that regard I also have some kind of advantage. There's kind of a collective action problem uh, with regard to that and that it benefits any one player to just wait a whole ton and then um, it'll take longer for the master to get back to your game. Um, and so he's got tons of other positions to consider and then he comes back and then he sees yours. And then he has to go consider all the other players' positions multiple times and then comes back and sees yours again. So it benefits you to take your time and um, make sure that your game is like one of the last ones that he sees. Or that he sees it the, le the least frequently of anything he's looking at. So there's as many distractions as possible. Um, now the reason that that's not really a strategy for Simuls is that if everybody spends all their time, um, then that doesn't benefit um, the players or participants. Uh, because he sees each position equally frequently. So I bet he takes e4. He does. This is going to be a learning experience. Uh, I feel I'm about to get slapped around a bit. So the immediate threat here is knight g3 um, winning the rook, or winning the exchange. So I could play it knight e5. Knight g3, king g1, knight takes rook, knight takes f7. Uh, queen moves, knight takes rook. Um, that might be okay. What's not okay is like knight e5, knight check, pawn takes knight, queen takes rook. Oh, I don't even have knight g1 there. Um, but sacking the exchange might be okay. 
because I'm winning a full rook um, for the exchange. Now, arguably, after moves like knight e5 and knight f7, he's got things like queen c6, um, where, okay, he's getting my bishop and my knight stuck in the corner, but his queen's the only active piece. Um, it's really sharp stuff. The other thing is I could just throw in king g1, putting an end to all these tactics. Um, and I guess I'm not sure where he's going after that. Probably knight c6, stopping knight e5. So, I have to consider, do I want to play queen e1? If I play queen e1, he's probably doing f5. And I can pile up on that um, and get my pawn back. Or do I go for broke, go for the gold with um, like knight e5 here? Knight e5, check, king g1, knight takes rook. Um, it has to be knight takes f7, because if bishop takes, he moves his king away, and I haven't accomplished much. Uh, so yeah, knight takes, queen c6, queen e1, after his knight's taken my rook. Um, uh, maybe bishop e7. I still have loose pieces. Actually, no. Queen e2 check would defend my bishop. Um, if I'm looking at the right position, I think I am. Knight e5, knight g3, king g1, knight takes rook, knight f7. Queen c6, queen e2 check. Does something about the check, and then knight takes rook. And uh, we've both taken a rook. I'm down a pawn. Oh, I guess the other thing I've completely missed here is knight e5, knight d6. Well, there's a monkey wrench, if there ever was one. Um, so maybe I have to interpolate, like, queen e2 here. Queen e2, he has to do something to defend the knight. Like, queen c6, no. How does he even defend it? Queen e2. Um... This is going to be fun. Me too. He's got to play like f5. And then if I want to try to exploit all this, I play knight e5. This releases his knight, so he's playing uh, knight g3, forking my king and queen. Oh, what a mess. Why don't I just play queen e1, though? Queen e2 tries to defend my bishop, but my bishop doesn't look like it needs defense. Um, I was just looking at lines where I sack the rook with check, but no, he keeps bombarding my king with checks. So it's looking like queen e1's the only reasonable play here. And if queen c6, bishop takes f7. We'll give it a try. See, it's, you saw me spend like several minutes on that move. Um, I know I casually mentioned before he moved, he probably is going to take e4. I'm probably playing queen e1. But I just wanted to look at all the possibilities as now I'm forced to commit to something. Um, so far, all I committed there was just giving up the e-pawn, and that, um, it's a pretty weak commitment there. Um, um, I'm trying to for remember what the saying is. Um, There's a saying about, like, um, a chicken and a pig contributing toward a breakfast. 
Uh, and Chicken donated some eggs, an egg or something. Uh, and I guess the saying went something like the chicken or the hen. Um, the hen volunteered, but the pig was committed. Because we all know the pig as being part of the breakfast. Uh, uh, you know what bacon's made of. Anyway, I wish I could remember the story. It's an interesting little saying. But yeah. Uh, my larger point here is that giving up pawns is really nothing to worry about in the larger picture. In the grand scheme of things, who cares about a pawn or two? Yeah, in a close game, in a really serious setting, pawns really matter. In an end game, pawns really matter. In an opening where you're flying by the seat of your pants and you don't know the theory and both players are uh, equally likely to goof up, who cares about pawns? Let's go for the king. Um, now granted, I'm playing against a uh, national master here. And I'm playing an opening that I usually reserve for blitz games. Um, I sometimes do reserve it for events like this where I don't necessarily have the greatest attention span. So I'm playing um, stuff that's going to keep me very interested in the game. I'm not necessarily going to deal with finesses of pawn structures and a Rui Lopez or something like that. It's it's a weekend, it's absolutely boiling outside, um, and so that's why you hear the AC going, but it's still kind of warm inside. So we're taking a bit of siesta here and um, playing some fun moves and seeing what happens. I do worry about his time situation though. Like, I thought, I forget how many players volunteered for this. Actually, it'd be kind of cool, like, if in the simul name, it would show you how many players are still playing, wins, losses, and draws. Um, just so you could get appreciation, at least for how many people are in the simul. This would be an excellent place to show that and keep updated statistics. Um, um, there's probably a lot of overhead in doing that and not too much reward, but it'd be fun to know. And if, um, maybe one day they'll have that. That'd be cool. So here we are, he's got three and a half minutes left. We're on move seven. And assuming 10 players in the simul, he's got one second per move for all of his games. Assuming more than 10 players, he's got less than one second per move. Okay, so there it is, F5. Um, now, I have Knight BD2, just winning back the pawn, if I'm really materialistic. And maybe I am at this point. Maybe I just say, you know what? My attack's not going anywhere. I'm taking my pawn. Um, the alternative would be I play Knight E5, and probably end up dropping my bishop somehow, just stupidly, as I try to go fork his queen and rook. Uh, my queen would be better poised for attack if it were on the light squares. Um, I could also play g... oh no, that does not work. No, no, no. That's bad. I was going to say g3, intending bishop takes f4. That really does not cut it, because he's got queen h3. Um, and then he could take ng3, and it's just sad times. Um, but yeah, maybe I wimp out here and play knight bd2, and then just take on e4. And down upon, but I've got good development. And really good chances of getting the f1 back. Yeah, I think I'm going to wimp out. I picked this over knight c3 because of knight c3, he's got bishop b4 pinning my knight. Uh, here against bishop b4, I just have c3. Um, 
so. Um, this knight's still pinned. I still don't see a way to rescue it. So that's what confused me the most about um, my opponent voluntarily going into this. Is how is the knight getting out? I know this is a simul, I know he's distracted by all the other players and by the fact that this game is last among those he's seeing. I mean, surely nobody's spending more time thinking than I am. Because uh, I don't know the theory, so I'm inventing it on the fly. Um, all I know is that that bishop e7 and bishop h4 check doesn't work so well. And I think at one point, like, at least a decade ago, I tried to find a way to make this queen h4 thing destroy white, and I just couldn't find it. So, um, yeah, this particular variation of the king's gambit intrigues me. It certainly offers good practical chances, and it's not the main line, and I'm just impressed at um, what pragmatically it seems to offer. I'm really surprised by this bishop b4 move. Um, I really have no choice other than to uh, interpose this pawn. I'm not sure why he did that, because that really strengthens my d-pawn. Okay, what gives? Is he sacking two pieces for something? Or is he attempting to? I might not even take it if he offers it. So I could do knight takes knight. I could do pawn takes bishop. Knight takes knight, pawn takes queen takes. Because uh, he's attacking my knight, I have to do something. And I'm attacking the f pawn. He probably plays g5 and just mows my king down. Which is no fun. Um, pawn takes bishop, on the other hand, looks... I'm grabbing some material, he does knight g3, um, king g1, knight h1, and I don't seem to have a crushing attack there. Oh, I've got knight e5 here. Oh man, is that a monkey wrench. Knight e5, and I'm threatening, among other things, knight f7 mate. Um, So, that actually makes this um, knight takes knight a lot more venomous, because I can play knight takes knight, and then queen takes, or I don't even have to do queen takes, knight takes, pawn takes, and then knight e5. And where are any of his pieces belonging? It's just really weird. So I'm guessing if knight takes, he's got to play like bishop e7 to stop knight g5. It's just super weird to me. Oh wait, knight takes rook e8. I've got knight g5, he's got this. So that's not so great. Um, knight e4, rook e8, knight e5, he's got no checks. Um, let's play it and see where this ends up. I'm not intending to try to run him down to one minute or anything. Uh, it just took me a long time to come up with a constructive idea there. So the idea is, if he plays rook e8, then instead of trying to escape the pin, I put a second piece into the pin, because I'm threatening this. Um, and I'm still threatening that. So I think this forces him to be more generous material-wise. And that he trades a rook and a bishop for my two knights after I've already taken a knight. Right, that I did not expect. Um, because this allows knight e5 anyway. Uh, I could take there, but there's no reason. Yeah, f7 is super soft here. There's 
it's extremely tempting to go after f7, especially because this bishop's hanging. So I've got this. So that's your family fork. I've got this, which so is just a free bishop. And if he moves his queen away, maybe I... yeah. That didn't quite work so well for him. I'm curious, I'm super curious what happened this game. Um, but you know what? Actually, I'll, tr I'll try going through this. I'm sure he's covering this in his stream as well. Um, so let me just run this through. Oh, here's the opening book. Yes, notice I added a freedom gauge. So, we got red, white, and blue. Um, got to think more about how to style that, but I like, it just adds some color to the stream. Um, so, wait, are we looking at the masters? No, let's look at the master database. Okay, so this has never been hit, basically. Knight f6 is not common. Um, knight c3 is the only move played in this position. D4 is not accurate, but neither is knight takes pawn. Uh, and this is a game just between two 2200s. So this position's basically never been seen before. Um, this, so this position's never been seen before. This position must have transposed into a different game. And yeah, I was expecting D6. Um, Queen E2. I mean, it looks like both players are doing reasonable developing moves, right? But d4 is not the way to go here. White should have preferred rapid piece development. d6 anyway, queen e2 anyway. Um, we saw in the game I wasn't able to take the f-pawn, so this kind of stuff seems reasonable. Uh, but black lost that game, so it's perhaps not the best theoretical example to follow. Um, yeah, king d8 does not work at all. This might have held. Bishop e7 might have held. So, we'll never know. Well, I suppose I should go back here and see what is it, king f1, if black plays knight f6, which I've not seen before. I've seen d6. Um, I'm, supposed, yeah, I'm supposed to do this. Uh, queen h6... Again, I did not expect that. Um, but why should just prefer rapid development? That's the answer. And he's got some compensation. It's an even position. Neither player's really messed up at all. Um, I just happened to luck out this game. Alright. Um, so, thanks for watching. I'm going to tune into his stream and see what he's got to say about it.